Uh, but at the top of the screen, you have the, the four different views of the calendar. And I, in the handout, I, I went in backwards order because I kind of feel like the year view, this is probably the least useful. Uh, I, don't, I don't think you can do hardly anything in this view, except you can click on a date and you'll get like the agenda for the day. And Joan, you're admitting people, yeah? Okay, so, and yeah, in this year view, if you wanna do the shortcuts, it's command four. Command one is day, command two is week, command three is <clears throat> month, command four is year. Can I ask so a if, question? Yes, Ross. Hi, it's, it's Ross. When you're in year view and you have those uh, events that are shown on a particular day, can you interact with one of those events by clicking on it? No. Doesn't give you anything. You can't do anything. Yeah, double oh. clicking it, nothing. So it is pretty no. useless. It is pretty useless. Yeah, so if you don't have a lot of events, you might find the month view uh, useful. I personally have way too many events. Like if you only had like one or two things a day, month view would probably be useful to you because you could see everything here. Once you get more than three, three, four things, you're going to get this more item. And then that's, I can't even click on more to get to more items. So I can double click on events in this view, Ross, and kind of interact with it. But I see. Almost useless. So I, I think most people spend their time in the week view or the day view. But anyway, week view is kind of useful because um, anywhere on this grid of, of the week, you can click and drag to create an event. And so I just click and drag and I released and then I can type in this, add all the details, okay. And then it just creates the event for you. Usually that's how I create events. I don't know if that's how you create events, but I, I usually will, I usually have, well, you can see I have a lot going on always, but I usually have to find a white spot in my calendar to create an event. And then can once you I create find a, it. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. No, can you ahead. create an event over an event? Can I like that 1030 on Thursday, can I create something right over it or do I have to sort of finesse my way around that? Yeah, no, you can create an event over this. Um, the challenge would be when your events are really compact like this. Right. So if I clicked above the event and dragged down over it, yeah, that's fine. I can It'll create a, an event there. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to delete that. Right. And uh, the other way you don't often think about creating events is to start at the end of the event and drag up. Oh. But that works too. So, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong screen. So, if you have the white space below the event, you can drag it up over the event. Okay, and then once it's created, it kind of spaces out. So, that might be a tip that's useful. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if your calendars look like this where there's not a lot of white space, but if I, if I have to make like a 3 p.m. meeting here on Wednesday the 22nd, there's no way I can click and drag that because if I start to, if I start to drag somewhere out, the event starts to move. Right. So that's not, that's not a good deal. Um, so Arlen, can you click on the white spot above that and then change the time to like three fifteen once sure. you put sure. in a new event? Right. Right. So that's one way to do it. Right. So you, you make the event here. It's a, maybe a hour event. Um, no. Sorry, I can't type and talk at the same time. And then I can click on the time and then change this to like, like you said, 3.15. Uh -huh. And this then it, it, it will move like that. I would um, to okay. Change. It's, it yeah. came back. So I that's, it it on oh that's kind of like a, um, like a two-step mm -hmm. way of mm -hmm. creating events. The other easy way to create the events is with the plus button. So how many, how many of you guys use the plus button, this wave or something? Never. Never. 
Never? Frequent, frequently. Never frequently? Okay, we're, we're split here. Half of you do and half of you don't. But the plus button is called quick entry. And it's, it's actually pretty good. So um, if I wanted to put in the event, July 22nd, sorry, can't type. 3.15 p.m. Um, and what, what did I call it? That was lunch, but second event. So if you just type it in like what they call natural language, you just type it like you would say it and hit the return key, then it'll add the event. So, Arlene, is that, is that the uh, same for the iPad, the uh, iOS system as well? Yeah, it's the same. Yeah, um, so I, I can show you the iPad after this if you'd like. Yes, please. Thank you. Just okay. quick so that was the, the quick entry, right? Up here with the plus button. Um, that's probably your best. For me, that's the best way to get just a simple event that I don't want to add a lot of details. I like to add all the details into the event. Um, and so I'll show you, I'll show you why. Um, I'm going to switch to the day tab so you can just see that. So if I just wanted to see one day at a time. Um, and then let's see. Uh, Lita, you had the question about all these, all these holidays and things that appear. Yes. And I can just talk about that right now, but in the, in the right left sidebar, sorry, left sidebar, you have all the calendars, right? And you've got one calendar that's called holidays, U.S. holidays. Mm. So if I uncheck this, all of the holidays should disappear from the calendar. Okay. So if you, if you want them back, you just check the box. And if you don't want them, you just uncheck the box. Okay. Good. Thank you. Oh, Thank while you. we're there, Arlen, may I add? A, may I ask a question? Uh -huh. While we're there, how do you reorder? If you want to reorder those, the list, top to bottom. Say if I want Arlen, Mr. Arlen, first instead of A N at Hawaii W P. I'm. I'm not. I've never thought about that. Let me try. Click and drag it, and I. I am able to click and drag. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. To reorder the. Uh, yeah. I'm not able to drag the top one. I'm not sure why, but okay. I was able well, to drag this one. That's good enough. Thank you. Okay. Um, but Arky, what you can see is I've got different, different accounts. So this is my, uh, this is an exchange oh, yeah. account. So yeah. I'm, I can't move my Google calendar into the exchange area. Right. Um, I you see. might not be you might not be this complex you know you might have all of your cal calendars in iCloud or all of them in in Google I'm a simple man <laughs> yeah and and frankly right, I've never right. I've never thought about dragging calendars cuz it's just never uh, occurred to me okay I I mean why do you have a Google calendar Oh I use a Google I don't use the iCloud calendar to be honest I'm thinking I should start, but um, I was using Google Calendar long before, long before I was using anything else, and I just I just kept using it. So this Mr. Arlen is my is my main personal calendar, and then this is also a Google Calendar. Um, this is a Google Calendar. Oh, this is a Google Calendar for some of my work things, and this is the Microsoft Exchange Calendar for my my work meetings. Oh, okay. But you view them all within your Apple iCal. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I have to know, I have to know what if I, you know, if I have a personal meeting, I have to know that I don't also have a work meeting at the same time. So I have to mm -hmm. view all the calendars at once. Yeah, um, thank you. you can see I've got a lot of birthdays in here. Mm -hmm. And I think that's because I have this contacts item checked. So anytime you put a birth date into a, the contacts or your address book, it will appear in your calendar. But to me, that's just um, extra stuff that I don't need to see on the calendar. Mm. I don't know, which is probably also why I don't ever buy anybody birthday presents. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll forget when you're birth. Actually, if you're that important, I'll put it in the calendar. 
and not not pull it from the context. So that's just a personal. It just won't do it. Um, I have a I have a comment. And now okay. Hi. At the bottom too. Elizabeth. Hi. Hi. Um, Joan, I have a Google Calendar because I share it with my daughter, and she doesn't. Uh, she's not an Apple person. So I have that for us to share, and then I use my, and I yeah you know, I use my i calendar for, for me. That's a good reason. He has an i calendar. Good. Thank you, thank you. That's a good good tip. But does that mean that then the Google and the i calendar will all show up in this calendar in the calendar, right? Right. So you can. It does. You can add them, and this is in your handout too. But if you wanted to add, like, say you only had, uh, you only had the 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 iCloud calendars. If you wanted to add another account, you just come up to calendars, add add account. Then you could sign into like your Google account to add it there. Mm. Thank okay, you. and so that's how that's how I've gotten all of these in here. I've signed into several yes, different accounts. Hmm. Okay, so the day view is probably one of the best views to add events. So I'm adding. I'm going to add events in the past, so it doesn't affect my calendar. But um, so if I add an event here. Uh, like I showed you, you click and drag. The day view gives you all the information on the right side and your calendar on the left. So now you can fill in all the information here, right? So like if you have a dinner. Um, I like to always add the location. And you just, so if you just start typing, this latest uh, version of calendars will let you search the internet for different places. So Happy Days is a Chinese restaurant in Kaimaki and my family goes there all the time. So I, I always pop this in here. Um, but when I click on that, I add the location to this event and then I get a little map in the bottom. Okay. So why would I, why would I even do that? because I've got also an alert when it's time to leave. So if you put in a lot of meetings and you have meetings that are away from where you, where you work or where you are, I always put in the, the location because then Google has, a, I mean, Apple has a maps service, right? So they know where everything is, they know all the traffic. So if I was actually gonna drive to this event, it could give me a pop-up. So from where I am to Kaimaki, it's probably 35 minutes with no traffic. But if there is traffic, it's gonna be 50 minutes. And so this will adjust that time, right? So I could just put in uh, an alert to leave 45 minutes before the event. But Apple will make this smart enough so that the time will adjust based on the traffic. Does that make sense? So I always yeah. put in, especially when I have meetings that are not in my location, I always put in the location so that I get this alert when it's time to leave. I like to also put in a second alert, like maybe an hour before, because I might have to, um, I might have to pack my bag or I might have to get some things ready before I need to leave. So if I have a second alert, I can pack the bag, and then when I get the time to leave alert, I can just leave. So there's a, there's a lot of neat things that you can do with these calendars. Um, I don't know if you've ever added invitees to your events, but like if I was having a dinner and say I'm having a dinner with Joan, I'm, I can type in her name and put in her email. So she, when I click send at the bottom, 
it'll actually send her an invite to this dinner. It, this is, I scheduled it in the past, so I don't, I don't know if that'll actually work. But when you schedule events in the future, you can, um, she'll get a little notification. I don't know if you can see this icon. It's like a downward arrow into a box. Yeah. It's like your inbox. So whenever you get invited to meetings, like I just invited Joan to that dinner. And Joan would get this pop-up in her calendar. And now she can accept the invitation, decline it, or put in a maybe. It's more for like... Um, you know, if you're in like a corporate setting and you want to invite your your um, coworkers to a meeting and you want to know who's going to be there, you can add all these invitees or attendees to the meeting. Um, how, how do you know that Joan has accepted? If, if Joan actually accepts, this question mark will change to a green check mark. And if she declines, it'll turn into like a red a red dash, I think. So. Can, can you have it send all the invitees a reminder? Yes. How do you do the reminder like the day before? Okay, that's that's actually a good question. Uh, I don't know how I got this video call information. So if I change this appointment in any way, like if I change the time uh, or if I add a note, so in, in like a business setting, like, um, or even with like a volunteer group, like at the church, um, Pastor Bob, you could add like the uh, the meeting notes here in the notes section, you know, agenda, whatever, whatever you want to call it. And then you could see that I have a button called update. So update will actually send an email to everybody who's an attendee in this meeting and give them the update. Could be an updated time. It could be updated notes. So. People in business settings have been using these kind of features all the time, um, but we just have them, we have them at our, our disposal also. So, so you could type in there, reminder dinner tomorrow, uh, 6.30 happy days, and then it will send it to whoever's in that list. Correct, correct. Oh, cool. Um, try, try it out and make sure it works. Um, so I'm using this with my Google account. So if anybody wants to um, try this with like an iCloud, I gotta find the time here. All right, let me see if I can put this in. Okay, I'm gonna add. I'm gonna add a lunch here. Lunch with Joan. Okay, lunch with Joan. And I'm gonna change the calendar to iCloud. I just want to make sure that this works. Invite me too. Okay, we're gonna invite. Where where should we go? Tango. I like dim sum. <laughs> Tango's good too. So when I've got this all set, I can hit send. And now you guys should get that in invite. Jonah Ross, you want to accept the invitation? So I, up I'm here. This is by text or by email? Uh, I put in your email, okay. so you should get an email. But okay. in in your calendar... Oh, my calendar. Okay. Right here in the in the top left corner, you have the inbox. Right. And yeah. you should have a invitation there. Is that I correct? Have <laughs> you have oh. fifteen invitations. Okay, let me see Joan. I just see it. Accept. Okay. So Joan accepted. Let's see if it changes here. Oh. Okay. So Joan went accepted. I got a green check mark. Ross. Has, it's it turned red. I don't know if Ross maybe checked. Uh, I maybe. said maybe. Ah. Okay. Hmm. I wanted to it's see a little bit happened. of a commute for you, Ross. Okay, so no, maybe it's I a red. Maybe. Can I go back in there and change my mind and say I'm coming? Yeah. So up here in the inbox, you replied. You can change the maybe to a accept or a decline. And I, I just clicked on that, so I went to that event. All right, I just accepted it. Okay, I'm totally lost. I forgot where I made that. I do too. <laughs> what day was that? Monday, Monday at 3 p.m. 
Monday. Monday. Okay. Here we go. All right. All right. So Ross accepted now, and it's a green check mark. So let's let's try this out. Um, reminder for lunch. And if I click update, you should get something. I don't know if it's a little notification or if it's uh, an email that you're going to get. But you should get some kind of reminder. So you can't text these uh, reminders. It's only email. Yeah, correct? you'd have to do that. You'd have to do that manually and, and text people. Oh. So you can't put in the phone number, right? Right. Um, not automatically, but I put in Joan's phone number. I hope everybody has your phone number already. If not, <laughs> they do now. <laughs> I didn't receive an email from you, Arlen. Okay, it might not. It might not get. You might not get an email. You might just get a calendar. You should have gotten a this inbox thing. Should have said some kind of update. So this is all just going to ha happen in the calendar. Sorry, I miss Susie's email to me to come. Uh, I don't see it, and I didn't get a pop up. Is it in your text? Your I'm iMessage. Checking. I'm checking messages and I don't have it in messages. Not seeing it. I wonder if the calendar itself is, has changed. If they don't use um, uh, Apple Calendar, will they still get a reminder? I don't know for sure, but they should because this is all just a normal calendar protocol. In order to see it, maybe you have to quit the, quit the calendar app and reopen it? No, it should disappear in a notification. Maybe that maybe that feature just doesn't work. But why don't I'm you sorry. guys try it and, and see? What did you Arlen, what did you say you had changed? I'm sorry. I just I just put in here in a note, reminder for lunch. And then I click the update. Okay. Which I thought should have uh, sent you a a little pop-up notification yeah I, I didn't get a pop-up and i didn't get anything in my email or messages and i'm looking at the uh the screen that has the event uh-huh it shows that you and joan have both accepted well, joan is still has a question mark i'm a question mark no i'm a yeah. check well, on my screen you showed as a, as a question mark really so what about your screen, Arlen? I, I can't yeah. see that right now. I oh, I added her phone number in addition to her email, and maybe that's why she's got a question mark because huh. her phone number has not been confirmed yet. Oh, okay. So maybe it's in my messages. So do we have to turn on notifications for the calendar in uh, notifications? Um, I'm assuming you all have it turned on already because that's how you get your calendar notifications. Like you have a meeting or you have a doctor's appointment. I'm assuming you already have it on. Maybe not. Maybe that's why I don't get my notices. I wonder if you did something like change the time. Maybe that would come. Um, let's go 11 a.m. And update. Let's see if you get that. Okay. Now you've all changed to question marks. Uh-oh, I got something. Oh, so now, you know, I Oh, time changed to next Monday at 2. Arlen, uh -huh. under calendar notifications, there's uh -huh. there's invitations off, invitee responses off. So there's like six or seven things you can, I mean, six different things you can choose. So maybe, because my invitation's off and my invitee responses is off. Okay, are you on um, an iPhone? Yeah, just checking on the iPhone. Okay, part. okay. So if I have off invitations, I won't, I won't get your your notification, your Correct. update. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Well, you would get it. You just won't know that you got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't get the notification thingy. Okay. Right. Right. And also, there's an off and on for invitee responses. Okay, Marcy, so you had a question about time zones. Um, you might want to turn this on, calendar preferences. How did you get there? It's under advanced, Arlen. Turn advanced. on time zone support. Turn on time zone support, yeah. 
Yeah. Um, so Marcy, if you travel a lot and you do, you might want to check this box, turn on time zone support. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, and that, that should automatically, when you change time zones, it should automatically change, adjust your calendar because you're in a different time zone. Okay, so let's say I'm here and I'm going to a theater in New York in a month, like buy the tickets here and it and starts at eight o'clock. So if, if I put it in here, I mean in Hawaii, is it going to show me eight o'clock when I get there, or is it going to show me two o'clock in the morning? Okay, this is our other experiment. So I'm going to add an event. I'm going to use this quick entry and see if this will work. Um, so I, I don't know what to call this, but uh, let's put it August 4, 8 p.m. So I, I ended this by with EST. Well, it's EDT. EDT, okay. Daylight time. Yeah. Eastern Daylight Time, thank you. And so when it creates this event, it's going to create it at Eastern Daylight Time. Okay, so, so when I get there, and, it's, and because you've chosen automatic time zones, then when I get there, it, it's not going to show it. Eight, at two o'clock in the morning, it's going to show eight o'clock, right? Right, right. So let me create the event. Thank you. And then, okay, so on my calendar, it creates the event at 2 p.m. Right. Wow. But when I get there on New York time or what, you know, Eastern time, it's your times are going to shift to Eastern time. And That's then it's going to cool. appear at mm -hmm. 8 p.m. Okay. Because you changed it in the advanced thing. Oh, great. Thank right. you. And so that was, so time zones, is, like adding you to the time zone is helpful here, right? So when I created the event, I, I put EDT so that it creates the event at Eastern time. 2 p.m. Hawaii, 8 p.m. Eastern time. But if you didn't write down the EDT because, because you went to advanced and, and did the automatic thing, wouldn't it just do it automatically? No, because it wouldn't I, work. I don't. I don't think it would do it automatically. Um, okay. Would it work if you put in a uh, where it is lo location? If you said it's in New York City or to, at the Sullivan Theater or whatever that's called, Winter Garden. <laughs> I I doubt it would work. <laughs> I doubt it would work. But um, try it. I put in put in some events with. Can we try it? Uh, Broadway musical. Location, just put the winter garden and see what happens. The, the winter garden? Yeah, the winter garden. That's where all the musicals are. I think you got to do the city or state. I think you have to do city and state, right? Sometimes no. I don't, okay, I don't think this is going to put in the location for me. The reason I, I, I don't use the quick entry for um, more complex uh, right. events is because it doesn't, it doesn't do the location thing for me. Whereas if I clicked in here, it would add the location mm. and search for the location and add it. I, I haven't had good luck here. Um, 9 p.m. So we're trying to... Try put New York, just New York. It didn't add it to the location try adding it to the location now but really that's just going to add the location it's not going to adjust the time that's it's not smart enough to figure out that i'm in a different time zone so it's not gonna it's not gonna do much for me yeah okay well we, it's good we found the li limitations of our of our resources here somebody asked about ipad sorry let me Okay. My husband's sitting next to me with his iPad, and we, we, we're always fighting over the laptop, so we each got an iPad, so we're using that all the time now for everything. Okay, okay. So the iPad is very, very similar to the map. You've got your different views, right? The weak view, you can scroll around. Um, month and year views, pretty much useless. Um, in the bottom right corner, you have the inbox. 
which is what we were just taking a look at all the accepting the invites and those kind of things. In the top left corner, you have the plus button, which is kind of that, that entry. It doesn't seem to be like a quick entry like we have on the Mac, but you can just fill in all the details here. The, um, the two apps are very, very similar. So unless you have a specific question, I think anything we talked about on the Mac is pretty much uh, relatable on the iPad. You know, if I wanted to click and drag on the, on the blanks parts of the calendar, I can create an event there, type in all the information, um, you know, change different things here and add it to the calendar. So and iPad is very, very similar to the Mac. Um, the iPhone is also similar. It's just a different screen size. So I don't, I don't think there's too much. Can you use dictation? So you're telling the calendar to put in a date and time, etc. Yeah, I do that sometimes. Um, you guys use Siri? Does, does anyone use Siri? Yes, yes. Love it. Some, some of you use Siri? I do. I use it yeah. all the time. On your Mac or on your uh, iDevices? I'm absolutely never on my Mac <laughs> and mm -hmm. always on my iPad and iPhone. Yeah, yeah I, I feel exactly the same way. I hardly never use it on the Mac, but it's it there. It just doesn't understand me. It doesn't, I, I can't get it to like flow like it does on the iPad or the iPhone. How do you do that? You just talk to Siri. So if I'm Correct. like, say if I'm not in the calendar app, I just bring up Siri. Create an event. First Saturday the 23rd at 4 p.m. going to lunch with Joan, for example. Hey Siri, create an event for lunch with Joan on Saturday at noon. <laughs> Matsukawa. <laughs> yep. That is so cool. Can you also tell her to set the alerts and invite somebody? I don't think so. I don't, even don't know if we don't that. try. <laughs> the, okay, so the, I, I love Siri when she works. But the way she works is you have to like, you have to think in advance what you want to tell her. Create an event for Saturday and invo invite Joan Matsukawa and Marie Kunimura. Some people will get freaked out when the invitation comes. <laughs> <laughs> they okay, show up for lunch. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't think I can say that all in one breath. <laughs> if I don't say it all in one breath, she's going to stop and ask me for information. If you hold the button down and talk to her, then she won't do anything until you let the button go. What button? If you're, if you're holding down, uh, like on, on, on your button. iPhone, the power button, you hold that in. The, one, the button that you use to call up Siri, sometimes it's your home button, sometimes it's the button on the right. Create an event on Sunday at 11 a.m. and invite Joan Matsukawa. Yes. Let's go look at it. All right, let's go look at it. <laughs> <laughs> how badly we did. <laughs> All right. Okay, it is there. Here, I'll bring the iPad back over. Let's see. Okay, it worked. We've got an event. I just didn't put in a title, but Joan is an invitee. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't say lunch, um, well, like just because just I didn't say I didn't oh, say lunch. Oh, oh, yeah. oh. I can't, you know, I honestly can't think about all those things when I'm <laughs> creating the event. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't do it in, in, enough, right? So, create an event lunch with Joan at on Sunday at eleven a.m. and invite Joan Matsukawa. I just I can't say that whole thing in one breath. So it gets it but if, if you're holding the button down, you can take two or three breaths, and then you could say, "Lunch tomorrow, 12 p.m. Invite Joan Matsukawa." So it's all about thinking how to how to get all that stuff that you want in there. And you're right. There's a there's a really a learning curve for it. Try and be if you want to try and be smart, you know about about using her. You have to learn how to talk to her. My my Siri is an Australian male. It's more fun. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but he will misunderstand you. 
<laughs> like most men, but him in particular. Okay. All right. So the event popped in here to my calendar. It just took a little while. I um, I, uh -huh. I got I got the invite by email. Can I get the invite by text instead? No. That's what we're trying to do. Let me let me um delete you. Delete you. And let me add you by phone number. So if I add you by phone number, um, tell us in a minute if you get a text message. Okay. Okay. Um, I kind of want to wrap up calendars if you guys don't have anything else. That was good. Okay. So Joan, just tell us if you get that 